What if there is no literature? Now we've been talking about literature, how to write it, what to include, what not to include, how to format it. Now what if there is hardly any literature on the concepts that you are studying? What shall we do then? Now in that particular case, there are few steps that must be undertaken. We are going to talk about these steps in detail. You should know the conceptualization of the concepts. Now, once you know the conceptualization of the concepts, you should identify the key characteristics of the concept that could be linked. Now, what are the key characteristics for each of the concepts? Now, single out the keywords from the conceptualization. In order to identify the key characteristics, what you can do is you can single out the keywords from those conceptualizations, the definitions that you identify from the literature review. And most importantly, search for a theory that can help you explain the relationships between the concepts. We've done this in detail in previous sessions. Now try to link the characteristics. What if there is no theory that you can use? Now that you have identified the characteristics, try to link those characteristics between the concepts that you are trying to establish the relationship of. Now we are going to discuss in detail all these steps. For example, let's say you want to establish a relationship or you want to write about the relationship of X with Y. But this relationship hasn't been tested before. Now there is no literature available as to how X can influence Y. There is no literature on how to develop this relationship. How will you explain this relationship? Now in such situation, what needs to be done? Now before you start writing your literature, the first and foremost is that you should know the definition of the concepts. So your step one, the first thing that you need to do is you need to understand the concepts. You need to understand the conceptualization. You need to understand what is X, what is Y. Now, once you know these definitions, the next step is that you'd identify the key characteristics in each of the concept. What are the key characteristics of X? What are the key characteristics of Y? Now, with the definitions, in front of you, you can clearly single out the keywords from those definitions. And with those keywords singled out, you will understand these concepts better. Now, once you understand these concepts better, you can easily link the two concepts. Now, how do we do this linkage? Now, again, we have said that, okay, there is no literature available on how these two concepts are linked or there hasn't been any previous research on linking the two concepts. So the step one could be, let's say, what is our step one? Our step one is search for any theory. Let's say we search for theory. Now, is there a theory available that can help you link these two concepts? Now, how do you search for theory? So what theory has been used when this particular variable has been studied in the literature? Or what theory has been used when this particular variable has been studied in the literature? For that, you can go into existing research like the papers that have been written on these two variables. And then you can also use Google Scholar to search for theories with respect to this particular concept and this particular concept. Obviously, since both of them have not been studied together, you will have to search theory separately with each of these concepts. Now, once you search for theory, read the theory. Now that you know the conceptualization, the theory will help you materialize or put in writing how X could be related to Y in light of that particular theory. For example, let's say I'm studying a concept of servant leadership and this concept is influencing, let's say, humility. When I searched the literature on Google Scholar or maybe other databases, there was no research on how servant leadership influences humility. 
I can see that yes, if there is servant leadership, my employees would be more humble. So I look into this concept of servant leadership as to what is servant leadership and identify the different concepts or characteristics or traits of servant leadership. So a servant leadership builds a relationship. He focuses on growth of others. He develops others. He is humble. He is honest. He is ethical. And what is humility? So your employees are ethical. They are humble. They are down to earth. They are trustworthy. Now, once I know these characteristics, let's see, I search for theory. And while I'm searching for theory, I look into the literature and I come up with this theory that is social learning theory. Now, when I start reading about this theory, this theory shows that employees learn from their leaders. So a, an employee who is humble may have learned this characteristic from its leader. Because your leader is humble, so is your employee. Now this theory can help me explain this relationship. Now furthermore, apart from this or searching the theory to explain the relationship, one can look into other ways as well. Now let's look at those steps. Now, once you have looked into existing research and maybe you have found a theory to link the two concepts, there could be other steps that can be utilized. Maybe you didn't find a theory that could have linked the two concepts. What to do then? Your step one, let's say you fail to establish the relationship between servant leadership and humility based on existing literature. So there was no literature available. Once you have identified the characteristics of servant leadership, that is, these are the characteristics of servant leadership. He's humble, he builds a relationship, he's focused on the growth of its uh, followers and all those characteristics. So what you can do is, you can link these characteristics with the endogenous variable here, the dependent variable. So this can help you explain how servant leadership can influence humility. Let's say if you fail to link any of these characteristics with the endogenous variable, the other step could be, let's say step three, servant leadership, let's put humility. Let's say you identified the characteristics of servant leadership and you identified these characteristics of humility. So what you can do is you can link the characteristics of servant leadership with the characteristics of humility. So instead of linking these characteristics that you failed earlier, maybe you were able to link these characteristics. So you should. Now step three does not mean that you cannot follow step two. You, you can follow both of these steps. Now instead of linking the main concepts, you can link the characteristics of one concept with the characteristics of the other concept in order to establish how one particular concept may influence the other particular concept. I hope this session would have helped you understand how to link different concepts for literature review.